Father, thank you for your presence. Truly, all we need to be successful, to be prosperous, to be kingdom-minded, to be all that you've created us to be and to step into the much more is your presence. You created us to be carriers of your presence. Increase our capacity to believe, to receive, in Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to just, I'm not going to, I could spend 10 minutes kind of setting everything up, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start out with uh, the first thing that the Lord word he gave me, gave us, many of you have latched onto it for yourselves. New Year's Eve of last year, we had a praise and worship and prayer meeting. And at, in that time, we got, I got received that 2020 will be filled with encounters with God. God encounters. How many know that you can, God can accomplish in a minute or a few seconds in a sure enough God encounter that could take you 20, 30 years to work out on your own. I had an encounter with God, and I immediately quit cussing, quit drinking, quit doing drugs, quit looking at pornography, quit blah, blah, blah. I had a long list of things. And all of those things that I knew were wrong that I was trying to get out of my life, I had an encounter with God, and that quick it was gone. Right? And I'm very, very thankful of that. And so encounters with God, <clears throat> as we begin to living life giving, my, I got a little <clears throat> going on in my throat there. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a, like a raspy. I think it left. Living life giving, life changing encounters, and the Lord gave us the word to seek Him, to seek Him. No, I'm good. Seek Him. Thank you. 2020 will, about, will be about believing and receiving the much more. We have a vision here that, and there is much more, and then we're going to walk in the much more. There will be abundance followed by overflow. It's time for waters deep, lives changed, souls healed, deliverance in a fabulous week. How many of you have been having encounters? We've been believing for encounters. I think we're 54 days in, 54 days into this new thing that God's doing. And it's been amazing for me, uh, you know, because when God gives you a word, you think, so let's put it like this. When you think of an encounter, when God said we'll be filled with encounters with God, I had in my small thinking what those encounters would be. And then God's, and as I begin to have encounters, I'm like, what's going on? He says, you can't choose when and where the encounters are or what, or what I want to encounter you about. Right? He's God and Father's knows best. And when we say, I'm ready, then we have to be ready. Um, so I've had encounter after encounter. The Lord gave me a vision. I don't get many visions. I used to not very get very many visions. But in these last 54 days, I've been having visions. Thank you, Lord. He said, and, and it'll come to pass in the last days that I'll pour my spirit out on all flesh. Be dreams and visions. And we were praying at the youth house, at the well. We'll call it the well. David, Kimberly, and Serena was there, I think. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so I'm standing up at the front to the right, up at the front part of the, of the sanctuary with my eyes closed. Had been, we'd been praying for a while and just closed my eyes, and I was standing right next to the speaker where we had worship music going, but all of a sudden those words, I weren't even hearing those words, and I just saw like a, a campfire, a big campfire, and people were, were, and it was like, come closer to the fire, come closer to the fire, and so I saw people coming closer, coming up, and what happens, how many of you ever been around a big campfire or bonfire, what happens when you get, cl when you get close? Your face gets hot. That's what happens to me. My face gets hot, and I just have to back, back away. 
right? Or am I the only one? And he said, and I felt like the Lord spoke to my heart and says, when you come close to the fire and your face begins to hot, get hot, don't back away from the fire. And think, now stop. Now, I'm not going to try to tell you what that means to you. You have to pray to the Holy Spirit about what that means to you. But I began to kind of get a little bit of revelation. How many of you know that when you're in, what usually happens when you're not around a fire and your face starts getting hot? What's usually going on? Talk to me now. Come on. Your face is getting hot. Not the Holy Spirit either. Fever. How about hot flash? Different ones. How about when you begin to get a little bit angry? Does your face get hot? How you? Right? Right? So if you're believing for encounters with God, and what does God call us to? He said, he's called us to, to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love for one another. Right? Loving God, loving people, those are the two commandments. And so I, I began to realize that part of being close to the fire was, I can't talk, I, I'm gonna, I could go for 10 minutes if I take this route. Lord, help me. So, when you've been on purpose spending quality time in the presence of God not just a little in the morning not right so just really purposefully trying to stay in the presence of God and I'm blessed in such a way my my daughter's raised and and I have the freedom to do that but as in, in these 54 days I begin to spend more and more and more time in the presence of God removing activities and things that really don't matter and focusing on him right uh, just, and as I was in the presence, how many of you know that the more time you spend in someone's presence, the, the more you get to know them? And if you're not careful, if you spend time in someone's presence, you'll start acting like them and being like them, right? And so that can be good or that can be bad if we're hanging around with the wrong people. But I'm going to tell you one thing, spending time in the presence of God can never be a bad thing because the more time you spend with him, the more you begin to know him and the more you begin to be like him. Like when Moses was in his presence for those 40 days, his, his face, what would be the right word, Shanda? Glowed, shined, shone, shone. Would it be shone, shone? That doesn't sound right. But he had been in the presence of God for 40 days, as close as God come, and his face was shining when he came out. Right? So as we're spending time in God's presence, we should be more and more like him, right? More and more sensitive to him. Right? Because when you start hanging out with him, you start understanding how he thinks. When he says, do this, don't do that, go here, do, right? Just... It's just, just an awareness of his presence. And so, as you come close to the fire, and I'm going to get to the, to the part of the message that's going to tie all this together. As you come close to the fire, and then you walk out of the, you, you should never walk out of the presence of God. Uh, when I say, okay, when I get up, let's say I'm in here for two hours, and I'm worshiping, I'm praying, and then when I walk out these doors, should God go with me? Yes. So, so here's the deal. So now, how many of you know it may take a minute, it may take a while before I encounter some person, some individual. It may be my, you know, it, may, it could be anybody. And it could be even after your morning prayer time. You're going to encounter somebody that's going to cause some sort of a conflict where there's going to be just a little bit of a something going on right there. Right? Because, and it doesn't make you any better or any worse, but if you've been in the presence of God and they have not, and they come to you, it could be a little bit, oh, right? So, right, so now, so, so even if they have been, if, if someone comes to you with some sort of a conflict and you feel that your temperature, your face getting hot, right? So what do we do? Do we go into our old way of handling that? Because how many of you know we got, we got ways to, to get our way when we get hot? We can say this, do that. 
go into o autopilot mode, and then we just kind of have our little flare up and just keep going on. But the Lord is saying, when you have those conflicts and your face gets hot, stay there with me and resolve it by my spirit and by my grace, because I don't want you to live in that position anymore. And, and I've been, my, my wife and I have had three or four of them just in the last two weeks. And every time we've sat there and we talked about, we talked through it and we resolved it and I didn't back away from the fire. How am I looking? Inside joke. I didn't back away from the fire and just walk away from it and say, well, it was her fault or she could say it's his fault and why does it always have to be like this? But because of the encounter with God, we sat through and talked to and walked through some things and we made progress in three or four areas of our lives that have been issues, mainly because of me, because I'm the spiritual head of my home for 10, 15, 20 years. And I had my encounter with God 24 years ago, right? Right? And so when your face begins to get hot, the best thing, right, that's just a, y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, something's stirring, you're, something's not right, you're getting agitated, you're getting perturbed, you're losing your peace, whatever it might be, judging them, wondering what's wrong with them, right? If you'll sit there and ask God, God, why am I like this? Why am I feeling this? Why am I doing this? Do you think that he can show you why? And so many, many times I remembered, you know, I thought, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not going to give you too many details, and Margaret's going to forgive me for this, but we had an issue to do, and it had to do with money, and I thought she was the problem. When I finally slowed down long enough to have an encounter with God, God said, you're the one that has the problem, son. And so then instead of getting, you know, we, I sat there and let him speak to me for the next 30, 45 minutes or an hour. Um, so my point being... As, God, as God's pouring out his fire and as we come closer to the fire, when you're going through those things with people, don't back away from the fire. Stay there and resolve it. Talk it out. Talk it through. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you come to some sort of a, of a, of a better conclusion where we're, we're growing. Right? We're not stepping back. To just the way things have always been. We're going to do, God's doing a new thing. Amen. Does that make any sense to anybody here? Right? And sometimes it's not going to be comfortable. Because, you know, there's certain things. We need more, you need a little bit more air? I can turn it down one more. Are y'all good on the temperature? Could we go one click cooler or not? How many say no? How many say okay on one click cooler? We got more yeses. We got more yeses. There's blankets. There's blankets. There's blankets. Hey, and I'm not joking. When you start praying for the fire of God to fall, we've been praying for the fire of God to fall in here, and there should be some sort of a, it might not just be the temperature in the air. You might, come on, and if you're cold, you need to come a little bit closer to the fire. Huh? If you're cold, come a little bit closer to the fire. You're looking at the fire. Come on up. Come to the fire. So I took my seven minutes. Only seven minutes, Paulito. That's pretty good for me for setting everything up. Amen. So um, I'm going to read this, and then we're going to get going with our message. Uh, Patrick Whitehead. Y'all know Patrick? We love Patrick. Uh, we're, we're praying last night, and he, he came up, and he didn't say it out loud, but he just wrote it and put it up on the pulpit for me. And it said, if you believe it, when you decree it, then you shall surely see it. Miracles. Amen. This place filled with people who are filled with fire. Yeah. The fire of God. Woo. Amen? Amen. Okay. So we're going to get going on. Um, so this, I'll set this up in one minute. Three Tuesdays ago. At prayer, we pray at Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m. I was over there praying, and I started getting some things, and I wrote some scriptures down. And, when, and the way Pastor Phyllis always did prayers, when the prayer's over, we get back, and we kind of all share what, we've, what, what we got from the Lord. And there was different things said. And Terry Hutchison just got time, time. And he shared a little bit. And Kay got cleansing, shared a little bit. And I'm just looking at that, and I'm like, God is so cool. You know what I got over there? 
I've told you all this. Come on, you go ahead and spit it. Time for cleansing. And I'm like, hmm. Okay. And so he wrote down some, I wrote down some verses, and we're going to read through them. And, and so this is going to kind of be a message where you can take it however you want to take it. You can take it as rough, or you can take it as God loves me so much that he wants me to be able to come. See, I've always had this, this, this prayer. So if God is a consuming fire, right? It's in there three or four times. It said, for our God is a consuming fire. A jealous God, it says in Deuteronomy. It means he doesn't want to share you with the world. But our God is a consuming fire. And so seeing that, knowing that, knowing that I have, I, I'm not a sinner, but I have sin, knowing that I have flesh. And I've always heard that God will come as close to you as he can, because if he comes too close, he'll burn us up. How many of y'all believe that? And so I, my prayer has always been, not always been, for the first 10 years, I kind of backed off because I backed away from the fire, I'm sorry to say, but I've come running to the fire New Year's Eve of 2019. And I'm standing there and I'm just taking it. I think I got singed eyebrows, singed nose hairs. I'm like just, oh, it's all, but it's all good. It's all good. And my prayer has always been, Lord, come close to me as you can. Think about that. Come close as you can. God's wanting to come closer to us as a people. But first, before the glory, you know what? The, in the, before he can just fill this place with, the, with his glory, which is our promise, right? The glory of God to South Texas. And the glory is nothing but a manifestation of his presence. And his presence is love, and it's all these things, but also a manifestation of his presence is his fire, his consuming fire. And so when you want God and you start seeking God, you got to know that eventually you're going to come to the consuming fire part. He's, he's always going to, first of all, the first thing you're ever going to encounter in the presence of God is his love. He loves you and his mercy and his grace. And he's going to tell you how wonderful you are and how great you are. But if you keep coming into his presence and seeing things, he's going to start showing you things. Because once again, right, once you are in his presence and you become to be begin to become more and more like him and you have those encounters with where there's conflict where there are abrasive things and you see stuff coming up out of you that you don't like. Then, then when you see those things, and you haven't I mean, even you know, it's really not you that doesn't like them, but it's the Spirit of God in you that doesn't like them, because it says the Spirit of God can be grieved. It says, grieve not the Spirit of God, right? All right, and so, so when those things begin to come up that you don't like, and, and, and the people around you surely don't like, right? Come on. Then, then, then instead of making excuses for those things, you come and you come to him and then you say, look, Lord, I'm ready to deal with this, right? And that's where we are. I'm telling you, as a church and as, and as a country, as a nation, man, God is coming closer. God is doing some supernatural things, but we've got to let his fire expose. So I told this, I said, God's going to expose some things in your life, but he's not going to expose them to embarrass you. He's going to expose them for you can get rid of, get rid of them. Get him out of your life and become more like him and be all that he's created you to be. And he's not going to expose you to the whole bunch, to the whole church. He's going to come to you and deal to you one-on-one. -on -one. His last resort is to have to send a person to point out something to you. And he'll do it. He loves you enough to do it, but he'd rather deal to you father to son, father to daughter. And as we're in his presence and, and, and inviting that fire, he can do that and he will do it. But we got to be listening and we got to be willing to, when we have that conflict, when we have that, uh, that stuff rise up on the inside of us, to come to him and say, God, what is it? What do I need to do? How can I fix this? What to help me? I need your help. Yes. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So this is going to be one of those messages. You can take it as harsh or you can take it as a loving God wanting to prepare you for what he's called you to do. 
Yeah, I see it as wonderful. I see it as awesome. I see it as a, as, a, as a sense of he's got something big for us because he's wanting to get us to a place where we can be more, carry more of his presence, more of his glory, more of his, of his anointing. He wants to be a place where you walk in this place and the glory and the presence and the fire of God is here. And we're getting there. It's different in here. There's something different. God's doing some really, really awesome things. Amen? Y'all ready to get going? Chico brought me some water. I know he did. We love you, Jackie. I'm going to blame it on the fire. Fire is making me thirsty. Fire. All right, we're going to read through some passages. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. It's the, ampl the new Amplified. Uh, so are you, how many of you are ready to receive this? Amen. This can be for you if you receive it. Right? It can be for you. It's fit. I receive it too. Okay, let's go. Matthew 3, chapter 3, verse 7. The Amplified. No, we don't want the classic. We want the other one. I'm sorry. They redid the Amplified. The classic's good, but I, I wanted that one right there. Okay, so John the Baptist is baptizing people, right? And this is how it sets up. Now, this process has happened many times in the history of the Jewish people and of the church. Just because it's John the Baptist doesn't mean that the principles and all the things don't apply to us today, right? I can promise you it will. And you've got to just see this as coming from you, coming from the Lord for you, for us. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the divine wrath and judgment to come. So produce fruit that is consistent with repentance, demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. That is a great definition of repentance, right? And do not presume to say to yourselves as a defense, we have Abraham for our father, so our inheritance assures us of salvation. For I say to you that from these stones, God is able to raise up children, descendants for Abraham, right? He's like, don't think that some, somebody else's relationship with the Lord is your entrance into heaven. He said, I can raise up stones, Right? I heard this said once, God doesn't have any grandchildren. What does that mean? It means you ain't getting in on grandma's prayers. You have to repent. You have to believe. You have to receive. You have to call upon the name of the Lord. You have to come to that place. He only has sons and daughters in heaven. Amen? And already the axe of God's judgment is swinging whoo, toward the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and is thrown into the fire. Now, don't, don't move yet. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here telling you that America, that the world, we're in this place right here, and it starts with the church. I'm going to share that with you. Okay, let's keep going. As for me, I baptize you with water because of your repentance. That is because you are willing, right? To change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regretting your sin, and living a changed life. Amen. But he, the Messiah who is coming after me, is mightier, more powerful, more noble than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to remove even as his slave. Now, this is talking about Jesus. Now, listen to this. This is something that's coming. He will baptize you who truly repent with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I think we should capitalize the fire. You who remain unrepentant with fire of judgment. Now, yeah, but I think that's good. That's a good, there's different ways you can look at that. But the biggest thing I want you to see is he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. fire. Right? Fire. Okay. Let's keep going. His winnowing fork is in his hand. All right, now this is what he's, this is, where, this is where it comes to us. All those other things were true and, and needed to, but he says his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly clear out 
his threshing floor and will gather his wheat believers into the barn, into the kingdom, but he will burn up the chaff, the unrepentant, with unquenchable fire. All right, now I want to, I want to throw something at you right there. So, when you, you can look at this on different levels. So, we won't get into the winnowing fork. The winnowing fork was just something that, that, that they would throw up the wheat and the chaff into the air, and the wheat was heavier, and the wind would blow, and the chaff would blow, and what was real remained. The fire, it could be fire, it could be the wind of God. So when he brings his winnowing fork, he brings that, and he throws it up in the air, the wind of God's spirit blows away. What's, so you can think about that. Now you can take that as you, that you are on the threshing floor. And that as you let the fire of God and the wind of God blow through, he's, he's, he's putting you under pressure. He's putting you through his situations where he can throw you up in the air and, the, the, and blow out the stuff in those times we're talking about where his fire burns and blow out the stuff that's not productive, that's not producing fruit, that's not godly, that's not what he wants. And, what, and blow that out and what remains is pure gold. It's him, it's his spirit, it's his love. So that's something that's a process that you've got to go through. Amen. All right, and so uh, that's taking place, first of all, it's taking place in, in the individuals because a church is made up of individuals. We're a body. I, I'm, I'm, I've submitted to this process 54 days ago, right? So as we submit to this process, as we embrace the fires, we say yes to these things, this process is taking place in each and every one of you. It's taking place in me. We're getting to a place, a place where God can pour out his spirit upon us, fill us with his glory, that we'll be carriers of his presence, right? So it, there's a purpose behind it, right? Because of what he has in store for us. And if we skip this step of the process, we can't go on to the next. Okay. And it may go on for the whole year. Uh, it can go as, it, I've learned something. Well, it can take as long as we want to make it or it can go quickly. It's really up to us. How close to the fire, to the fire, do you want to come? Right? Okay. Okay. I wish I could say that it was the fire that burnt that. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. And so think about, I want to say this real quickly. So the church as individuals is there. The church as a whole is there. Not just this church, but every church. How many know there's some weird stuff going on in churches? We're going to stand for truth. Right? And then how many of you know it's taking place in our nation? It's, it's taking place in our government. I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> but there's something going on and God is up to something. And you want to make sure that you're standing on the, I'm just going to, I'm going to give you a, just a little political message. Make sure that you're standing on the right side when judgment comes. On my right hand, there shall be sheep and on my left hand are the goats. You want to be on the right side because we're what? We're raised right and we know what is right and we stand for what is right. Amen? That's right, right, right. Justin Todd had a song, Get Right or Get Left. He was talking about the rapture. Yeah, that's pretty good. Malachi chapter 3. Behold, now, now so we're, we, when the, we started off the year seeking God. Right? Seek me, seek me, right? So as we begin to seek him and, and some different things started happen, happening, this came. Now, this once again is kind of talking about John the Baptist and pretty much what we read in Matthew chapter 3. This is talking about that same thing, but it kind of fills in a little bit more of the details. But once again, this process is something that's not just happening that one time. It's happened time and time and time again through the ages, and it's happened again now to us. This is what's happening. It's happening again. Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will prepare and clear the way before me. And the Lord, the Messiah, whom you seek, are we seeking? Have we? So for you that are serious, we know that we've been seriously seeking God for the first 54 days of this year. 
right? And so he said, for those who seek me, seek and you shall find, right? So we've been seeking. We, I, I don't know about y'all, but, but I've been seeking him like I never have. And I know a lot of you have too. I can feel it in the room, right? And, and whom you seek, well, what, what will happen when you seek him? He will suddenly come to his temple. Amen. Suddenly come to his temple. So first of all, where, where's his temple? You're the temple of God. Right? And not only are you the temple of God back to individually, this is the temple of God. This is the house of God. This is where he's chosen, right, to, he's chosen this house, sanctified this house, that his glory is going to dwell in this house. That this room, this church, is be a holder and a carrier of the presence of God and the glory of God. And when you walk through these doors, you're fixing to have an encounter with God. I'm just telling you, that's, that's what, that's, we are a presence-driven church. We're, we're after his presence, and our prayer has consistently, constantly, be every time, everybody that walks through these doors has an encounter with God, and I don't even have to say a thing. It'd be better if I told Gilbert, I said, man, if the, if the Spirit gets to going, I don't even have to preach, because we're believing for encounters. Are y'all listening to me? Okay. So the, the, the Lord, the, who you suddenly, will suddenly come to his temple. Think about that. I mean, would it, would it, in Jesus, when the, when the glory of God just busts down the door and kicks, would it be a suddenly? Yes. Now I want you to look, and this is where we are. He will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. How many of you delight yourselves in the Lord? We delight in him. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Let's look at the next verse. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? Right? So it's kind of a warning. He's coming, but are you going to be in a place where you can endure his coming? Are you going to be a place where you can actually stand in the presence of God when he appears? Right? Is he going to come close enough to you that you can stand? Or, or, or for lack of better words, is your flesh going to just get burned? <laughs> right? I'm just I'm not saying. I don't know what's going to happen. We've never, this has never happened before. We've never been this way before. We have a few glimpses of, of, from the Bible about what does happen when God comes. And it's amazing. But also, he's saying this is going to be like something you've never seen. You better be ready for it. You better be prepared for it. You better take this seriously, all right? I mean, that's what he's, and, and I'm, are y'all listening? Okay, so, for, but when he comes, so he's come now, but he's come in his mercy, and he's come in his grace, and he's coming, he's, Pastor Phyllis always said, he's coming to his church before he comes for his church. So he's already initiated this process. He said, this is where y'all are at. And if you'll begin to deal with these things now, and, 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 and let's get moving with it. Let's deal with these, what, what you might think are little things that I think are big things, right? Because most of us in here are dealt with the big sins already, right? I mean, we don't need to get it. But those little things, those attitudes, those, those things between husband and wife, that, that judgmental, critical, whatever it might be, those little things. Now, if you've got some big things, you need to get rid of those. I don't even have to tell you what those are. But when he comes, he is like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap, which removes impurities and uncleanness. So what does he come when he comes? He comes like a fire, a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap to fire and wash to cleanse us. That's where we are. Okay, next verse. He will sit. As a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi. How many of you know that in the New Testament, he says that we're all kings and priests? We're kings and priests, purifying the priests. And I take this too. I've been sharing this with the leadership of this church. It starts with us. It starts with the priests. It starts with leadership as we begin to... Uh, Submit to this refining fire, this purifying, this, this winnowing process that he refines us like gold and silver. Why? What's, it, what's his purpose behind it? That they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. 
Those are prayers. Those are all the spiritual things that we do. If we submit to the fire, we can offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness, an offering that will be accepted. I want you to think about that. An offering is just an offer. Just because someone makes you an offer doesn't mean you have to accept it. Are you listening to me? Just because we bring an offering to the Lord doesn't mean he has to accept it. If we're not submitted to the purifying fire and that he might not, you, and you may not even know that he says no to your offer because you said no to the refining fire, the purifying of whatever. So man, we're, I'm telling you, we are in a serious time. We're in a serious time, but it's because he loves us. He wants the best for us. And the things of God are not just laying on the surface for the half-hearted. The things of God are for those that are all in. Huh? I'm telling you. It's where we are. It's an exciting time, but it's going to... I had a, a, a pastor, and a, I went to the, to, the meeting, to the men's meeting in Catula the other night. Awesome outpouring of God. And, and the pastor came and laid hands on me. And... Uh, I thought, man, I'm seeking God. I'm doing good. And he's, he lays his hands on me. He says, God says I want more. <laughs> God says he wants more. He says, you're giving me a lot, but he wants more. And I'm just like, I can do it. I can do it. I can give more. Right? <laughs> but, you know, it's like, good, okay. I can, well, at least he noticed that I'm doing something. He says, you're doing <laughs> It wasn't like, put your hand. Oh, my gosh, Jack, you know. <laughs> I've had that before. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord. Now, we're grafted in to, to Israel. But you know what Judah means? Judah means praise. Lord, we are a praiser. And when he says send Judah first, send the praisers first. See, that we are a praising, worshiping church. And it's catching fire. Huh? There's a fire started. It's different in here. I'm so thankful to, for our team and... And, and, and Pastor Gilbert and Miss Christina, Pastor Christina, and for the things that they bring to us. What a blessing to us. That, but we're pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old. Okay. So what does he come to do? To sit as a refining fire. To refine us. And, and I say uh, to burn out the junk. To burn out the flesh. Right? When we place our lives on the altar... Right? When we come to the altar, I say, Lord, I place my life on the altar, and I pray for your fire to come and burn up my flesh. You know what's funny? I heard someone say, how many of you know burning flesh is a terrible smell? Huh? How many of you know to God it's a beautiful smell? Come on. To God, your flesh burning on the altar is a, <sighs> how many of you know, anyway, you may, you may not think so. But that burning flesh that's one of the worst smells ever is pleasing to God when it's the fire of the Holy Spirit and it's burning out your flesh, your junk, your CRAP that you've been hanging on to for too long, right? That I've been hanging on for too long. I've been very open and transparent with y'all in this process. So I've got nothing to hide. And if I don't see it, I, when someone, anyway, I want someone to point it out to me. Except Margaret's still over there. <laughs> she gave me permission. She's like, I've been pointing them out. You've just been denying them. You've been making excuses. Okay. So wait, let, let's go back to, um, let's go back to where we were, Malachi 3. I want to look at 5. I want to look at 5. Malachi 3, 5, please. Sorry about that. Okay, so I don't want to go, so then, so now, so he's coming for, he's coming to refine us, to purify us, to, and, and that's really, isn't that what we're called to be? We're not, we're called to not to be conformed into this world, but to conform into the image of his son. How many know we got a little ways to go so we're just Christ-like? But how many know we're closer? His, his desire is for us to be Christ-like. And if you're not submitting to the fire and coming close to the fire as, as you can, let that burning, you're not going to be where you need to be. Right? Now, if he's, if he's in a time of, of sending a cleansing fire, it, we need to come run into it. And you, if you don't understand what I'm saying, you need to pray for God to show it to you what that means to you. Right? Because it means something to your spirit. 
You, you, there's something on the inside of you that understands this. You just got to spend enough time in the presence of God seeking his face to show what that means to you. Right? It's not my job to take every one of you aside. I'll, I'll help you if I can. But you got to seek God. You got to diligently seek him. You got to say, Lord, what is it that this means to me? What does this purifying fire mean to me? What does Pastor Jackie mean by coming closer to the fire? And if you seek him, you're going to find him. He's going to show you. Okay? But he says, then I will come near you for judgment. See, so, so well, then I will come near you for judgment. That's, that's, that's a warning. Right? And so verses 1, 2, 3, and 4 are a time for you to allow him to, to, to we'll get to the next verse, to, because when he does come, when he does stand, when he does come, you've done all the necessary steps. And when he comes to judge, you've already judged yourself and you have nothing to fear. Right? It's because, see, see, mercy and grace, grace is not just, um, grace is not just the permission or the right to continue in sin. That's a lot, a lot of people make grace to be. Grace is a period of time to repent from your sin. That's grace. He could get you, if he, but he doesn't. He doesn't want to get you. He's not after. He loves you. But grace is, gives, just gives time for you to repent. For you to time and in repentance is nothing but submitting to this process that we're talking about right here, right now. So when he comes near us for judgment, I'll be able to stand and I'm ready, right? Because I've submitted to the process that I'm throwing out there to y'all right now. Does that make any sense? I need more nods than that. Does that make any sense to you? All right. So then we'll go back to um, where we were going next. And nod and say it makes sense to you even if it doesn't. Because I'm telling you, your spirit's getting it. Your spirit's getting it. This is coming. If this is the first time you heard this, chew on it, meditate on it, think about it, ponder on it. Uh, uh, you know, this may not be politi in the right way to say it. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. What does that mean? Just inhale. Think about it. That's better to smoke this and something other things. So. 1 Peter 4, 17. We're about, we're, you know, we're, we're 10 minutes away from done. 10 minutes away from done. And just because it's, that's all, it don't, don't take all day. So it, this was written over 2,000 years ago. But there's been times throughout man, humanity, I mean, mankind's time, that this has always been an issue. It's all, there's time for judgment. I preached this two or three times over the years. But never like I'm preaching it now because this is, this is something that's supernatural and big. And this is legit. And this is real. How many of you know that the Bible says we're to go from strength to strength, faith to faith, glory to glory? Right? So every time we come, the time for judgment to begin, begin at the household of God, judgment comes where we can judge ourselves that we can be more carriers of his presence. Because the glory is nothing but the manifest presence of God. For go to glory to glory is mean you're able to carry more of his presence. Isn't that what we want? To be carriers of his presence. And we have, we have issues with people that we're not, we're not, we're, we're not, we don't, we don't, our face doesn't get hot and we don't blow it and, and, and grieve the Holy Spirit. Right? So we, we can behave in a situation like Jesus does, calm, cool, and collected. Refusing to get sucked in to the argument or the thing or whatever it is where you're representing God there. For it is so, so I'm saying this to say this is where we are. But God, and it's, it's because it's of mercy. It's because of grace that he said he's, he's letting us know what's going on. This is not a surprise attack. He's not going to sneak up on us. This is where we are, y'all. As a church, as a nation, every church, every pastor, they may not realize it yet, but I'm praying that they understand this. Encounters, for the pastors that have encounters, they understand where we are on the, on the divine timeline. For it is the time destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. That's the church. That's us. 
That's you. That begins with me, your pastor. That begins with the leadership of this church. And then it comes, flows down to you. And if it begins with us, what will, what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? Not good. But it begins with us. Say, say, I'm talking about me now. So here's the thing you always got to do. Who's, who, who, who is the subject of this conversation? Who, who is God talking to? You. He's talking to me and he's talking to you. So when he starts talking to you, stick to the subject. Right? You want to, well, how about you? No, 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 no. Let's stay, let's stick to the subject. God's like, I'm talking to you. Well, how come Lynn? I, let's stick to the subject. We're not talking about Lynn. We're not talking about Pastor Jackie. We're not talking about somebody else. I'm talking to you, son. Right? Begins with us. Begins with me. Say it begins with me. And why? Because he loves us. Right? He wants you to be able to stand when his glory comes. He wants you to be able to stand when his glory comes. He wants you to be carriers of the presence of God that you can be somebody's encounter outside these walls. Amen. But it starts here. Are y'all listening to me? You are. I know some of you are. Good Lord. It's going down into your heart. Going down into your spirit. 1 Corinthians 11. Wherever we go next. Okay. Let me make sure I got the right spot. That doesn't look right. So what do y'all know about 1 Corinthians 11? Someone tell me what y'all know about it. It's the part we read when we take communion. It's the most thorough teaching on communion that Paul does in the New Testament. Twenty-eight. I wrote it wrong. Okay. So now, if judgment, if if it's for, if judgment is to begin at the house of God, right? So I want you to look at this, because there's good news to that. So like, so judgment's coming. It's time to, judgment's coming. It's time to, for judgment's again, but I want you to look at this. There's always, God always has a good news and a way out. What's the way out of anything? Repentance. Repentance is the way out of judgment. Repentance is the way out. Repenting, what is repenting? Turning away like we talked about. But a person must, now this is talking about before you take communion, but this applies, you should be doing this every day of your life, not just before you take communion. This should be every morning, every day. But a, a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ and only when he has done so should he, let's just go out into the world and try to correct somebody else. Whatever. Whatever. Right? Let's look at the next verse. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence, heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ, eats and drinks the judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. The, that careless and unworthy participation is the reason why many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep in death. Do not be afraid of communion because of that. We don't do that around here. When you come and take communion, God's not going to kill you if you take an unworthy manner. If that was the case, there would probably be about five people alive in this church right now. <laughs> Maybe. You can't say that some, we haven't come up here and just mindlessly took communion at least one time in our life. Without perfectly examining everything, I guarantee you, I probably I took communion today with unconfessed sin in my life. And I'm preaching to you about this. He's a good God, y'all. He's not after you. But he does want you to be aware of his presence and begin to examine yourself. The next verse says what? This is where this is the one that I like. Oh, this is so good. But if we evaluate and judge ourselves honestly, right? Who are we talking about? You and me, us, against Jesus. But we do this in the presence of God. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you're not consistently in the presence of God and you start comparing yourself to other people, you're going to be okay. Are you listening to me? But if you're constantly in the presence of God and comparing yourself to him, huh? 
If, and then here's, I heard someone say this, if there's only one person that ever walked this earth that it's okay to compare yourself to, and that's Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what, you're going to come up short. But he loves you, and he's right. So don't look around and compare yourself. Like, this is you and him. But if we evaluate and judge ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, says we would not be judged. That's a hallelujah time right there, huh? He's like, if you'll just submit to the process, evaluate and judge yourself according to the word, according to by what, you, what, what you see in my presence, and when you come out of my presence and you feel your face getting hot, deal with that. Amen. Deal with it. I don't care if it's a lady whooping up, ripping up the, the, the president's speech behind him. Or, or, or Right? Or somebody that cuts you off. Or whatever. Are you listening to me? I see a lot of eyes looking down. We got to be willing to, 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 to confront that conflict that we have, whether it's with a brother or a sister in Christ, whoever it is, anytime. Here's the thing that I've learned. I, I'm going to have a conversation with someone but that they're involved with, and I'm like, I don't have anything good to say about that person, so I'm going to say nothing at all. That's going to be my opening line to somebody. We're to walk in the light as he is in the light. God says, judge, if you don't judge others, you won't be judged. So the first thing we got to do is quit judging others. It, say, it doesn't say, if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Right? That's pretty simple. Let's look at Matthew 7. This is an add-on, add and we're going to stop. 7-1. Matthew 7-1. That would be good, I think. I haven't read it, but we'll just trust that it's good. It is the Bible. Sometimes some of the translations are a little... But they're just translations. Doesn't make them good or bad. Ooh, God, that's perfect. That's better than I thought. All right, so here we are in this process. Who are we supposed to judge? Us. Not even the, 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 the right or the left in our government. Not other pastors, not anyone. We're not to judge anyone. If we don't agree with what they're doing, pray for them. Bless them, pray for them, don't talk about them, touch not God's anointed, right? So here's our closing, our closing verse. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority as though assuming the office of a judge. I'd ought to cut your legs out from underneath you right there. Huh? I heard a preacher say once, we're called to be witnesses, not judges. But, who, but, but it's okay to judge, but who are we to judge? Ourselves. Ourselves, say myself. It's okay to judge myself. But don't be harsh, just, right? Judge that it's sin, repent of it, and receive his mercy. You don't have to judge yourself and get all condemned and beaten down and I'm a sorry, no good. No, just repent of it, get washed in the blood, turn away from it, be free from it, and don't walk in any condemnation, right? When you judge yourself, say, yes, you're right, I did it, but I'm going to stop. I'm turning away from it. I ask you to burn that out of me. Right? Because I realize it's not pleasing to you. If you don't like it, I don't like it, so I want it gone. Pretty simple. No, I'm such a sorry mama. I'm so bad. No. No. That's the devil. That goes from, from repentance to condemnation. He convicts us. He shows it to us. Wants us to repent of it, receive forgiveness from it, confess it, let the blood wash or wash it, whichever you're a washer or a washer. And be clean and walk away with your shoulders up. No condemnation for me. I've judged myself. I've confessed it. It's under the blood. And there's no condemnation to me from this point forward. Now you need to quit doing it. Stop it. Right? You do. And that's the cool thing about encounters with God. When you have an encounter with God, you'll stop it. You'll stop it. An encounter with God will crush sin. 
Without an encounter, though, you're just trying to do the best that you can. And, and, and But you need to get into the presence of God, have an encounter with him, right? Seek him as he shows you those things. Let the fire of God burn those things out and go forward. And you can do it. This is what God's called us to. This is what he wants for us. This is what he wants for you. And if this sounds like a little bit too much, we might not be the church for you. Because we, I ain't backing down off of this. I know that I know for the first time in my life as a pastor, I'm hearing from God. I told him, on, I'll probably say it one more time. I told him on New Year's Eve, I'm tired of pastoring on my own terms. I thought I knew what that meant. I had no idea. But I'm loving it. It's great. And this is uncomfortable as it may seem. I'm loving it. It's great. My relationship with my wife is better than it's been in 24 years. My relationship with other people in my life is better. But it started. What's my number one relationship in, my, in, in the world? With God. What's my second most important relationship? With her. And so my dealing God's dealing with me has been a lot of things, but it's really been primarily between my, me. And I look, and I'm thankful. I'm like, thank you for not leaving, Margaret. Thank you for not leaving, Margaret. She's going to, she might not. Y'all pray for her because I might, she might slap me. I might get the red face because she doesn't like to be used as an example, but I have to because this is real. This is going on. This is what's happened. I'm so excited about it. Excited about it. Excited about it. How many of you excited about going on with God? How about the fire? Open, raise your right hand. Say, fire. Say Lord, Lord, baptize me baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Let your fire burn hot, hot in me, burning out my flesh, burning out the chaff, burning out impurities, burning out bad attitudes burning out anything that's not pleasing to you. And when I see those things and my face gets hot, I'm not backing away from the fire. I'm going to stand there and deal with it and crucify that thing and have victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. God is good on your feet. How many, okay, is there anyone here? This never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It's the biggest, most important thing. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to do that right here, right now. Because all of this means nothing without that first contact with the cross. So it'd be something like this. We'll pray it. We'll pray it out loud together. And you can go ahead and stand up. What's the first thing that you have to do to be a, a, a candidate to be saved? What do you have to do? Sin. sin. How many of you have sinned? Ha! And then the first thing you have to do is sin. And then you have to admit that you've sinned. And then you have to admit that the wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God. And then you have to admit that God had a plan to send his, his, his son, born of a virgin, who never sinned, to hang on the cross, to become sin, to take our punishment, to die on that cross, to shed his innocent blood, pure blood, precious blood, virgin birth blood. Spent three days in hell paying the price for us. And on the third day when the price was paid, he was raised out of there. Come on. And when he came out of there, what did he have with him? The keys to death, hell, and the grave. And who did he give those keys to? You and me. We have authority over the Satan now, over the Satan, over the dummy. And now he's raised to the right hand of the throne of Father, where he, throne of God, where he ever lives to make intercession for us. Right? If you believe all that, all you have to do is say, Father, Father I've, sinned. I've sinned. But I realize that Jesus is the answer to my sin. I believe that he was crucified, died, and on the third day was raised from the dead. For me, right now, Jesus, I ask you 
and confess that you are the Lord of my life. I ask you into my heart. I give you the keys to my life. You're now the boss. And you're my Lord. And I'm your child. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. And have your way in my life from this point forward. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, you need to tell somebody and you need to get baptized in water. We need to dunk you all the way under, drown that old man. It signifies the death that you've died to sin. Thank you for being part of our service today. We pray that you had a blessed time. Please take time to connect with us online at connect at christianfaithcenter.church and be sure to mention your prayer request. We would love to hear from you. You can also check out our website at www.christianfaithcenter.church for more information on any upcoming events. On Facebook, you can find us as Christian Faith Center Dilly, Texas. Hope you will join us next week for a great time in the Lord. God bless.